Welcome to Make It Happen with me, your host, Maggie. If you've found yourself here, there is a good chance you have a drive and desire in your bones to learn more and more about how you can become healthier and not only learn, but actually apply those things to your everyday life. Today's topic isn't just about overeating. We will get to that in a second because it is really important for me to share. But today we're talking about a huge driver and what has been a major factor in the decline of our health here in America over the past 50 or so years. When I decided on a career path in fitness and health, it was because I was passionate about it and I knew that people needed the inspiration and guidance to see, feel, and experience the benefits of exercise and eating just a little bit better. It was back in 2005 that I declared my major at Purdue University to be nutrition, fitness, and health. That is nearly 20 years ago. And in those 20 years, the health stats in our country have only continued to change in shocking and heartbreaking ways. But it doesn't have to be this way. We have to know just a little bit better so that we can do just a little bit better. Put in a little effort, not even a lot, and make some small adjustments. If we could each do that every single day, the health of our country would improve substantially. And that's the thing, it really doesn't take much. There are small tweaks that can make a really profound difference. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's get into it. The term processed food is certainly not new to you. Processed foods aren't inherently bad altogether. There is a wide umbrella over foods that have been processed in some way. Some foods are processed at their peak to lock in nutritional quality and freshness like canned tomatoes or frozen vegetables. And there are also foods with ingredients added for flavor or texture like pasta sauce or salad dressing. Ultimately, you can break down processed foods into four categories. Number one is unprocessed, number two is minimally processed, number three is just processed, and number four is ultra processed foods. And when it comes to ultra processed foods, there should be alarm bells ringing, especially if these foods make up, let's say 10% or more of your diet. A study from 2010 found that ultra processed foods made up about 60% of total calories in the US diet, and this was 14 years ago. Translation, chances are you are consuming a lot of your calories from ultra processed foods. And if you're the average American, that means 60% or more. I certainly hope that you are the anomaly, but regardless, we need to do better. And as a nation, that starts with each of us individually. There is more and more evidence coming out every day that shows that the increase in ultra processed foods is making us unhealthy and causing disease. Just recently, another study showed that when you increase the intake of ultra processed foods in your diet, that your risk of cognitive impairment and stroke goes up significantly, but that a diet filled with minimally processed or unprocessed foods had the exact opposite effect. Before going deeper, I think it's important that we take just a moment to define what ultra processed foods or UPFs actually are. UPFs are foods that have gone through several industrial processes. They contain ingredients that we typically don't use at home and are mostly only used by the food industry. Think emulsifiers, sweeteners, preservatives, and artificial colors. According to the Global Food Research Program, they are, quote, designed and manufactured for maximum profit containing low cost ingredients, having long shelf lives, are hyper palatable, and are highly branded and marketed to consumers. UPFs are typically calorie dense and high in simple sugars, refined carbohydrates, unhealthy fats, and sodium. And all of this together makes them highly palatable. Some foods that come to mind immediately are cookies, packaged snacks, instant soups or noodles, heat and ready to eat meals, candy, and of course, soft drinks. And I think it would be helpful to take a specific example of a food and how it can go through processing to become whole, minimally processed, or whole and non-processed food to an ultra-processed food. So let's look at an apple. The apple itself is unprocessed, obviously. It becomes, quote, minimally processed when you slice the apple and package it without any additives or sugars or anything like that. Take it a step further by making applesauce out of the apple, adding nothing more than ascorbic acid and water, but still no added sugars or food colorings. This applesauce would belong in the quote, processed food category, but it still hasn't really taken away from the nutritional value of the apple. However, that apple becomes ultra processed when you further take that applesauce and add things like sugar or high fructose corn syrup. And when you remove some of the nutrition from the apple to make it into apple juice, 
then you've now made it an ultra processed food that also is limited in nutrients. You can see how the apple's journey from a whole unprocessed apple to the apple juice is something that starts off as being super nutrient dense and then becomes something that is processed with limited nutrients available to you. I have left a link in the show notes to a Harvard article that shows some really cool and similar examples. If you're interested, take a peek. There are a plethora of negative impacts on your health when your diet is high in ultra processed foods, from weight gain to inflammation to chronic disease. Basically, if you tend to consume a lot of processed foods, there is enough evidence to show that it really is in your best interest to start taking inventory and making small improvements. But what about overeating? Well, you've probably deduced by now that yes, the research shows that UPFs are causing you to overeat. So if you're gaining weight, but you're having trouble putting down the fork, or you feel like you're always hungry, this is something that's really important to take a look at. A 2019 study found that a diet high in ultra processed foods automatically led to consuming more calories. They actually saw in the study that it led to consuming 500 extra calories each day. And whether you're a math person or not, 500 extra calories each day will lead to weight gain. So why is this? Well, it's because UPFs encourage you to actually eat more because they are highly palatable. They are literally engineered to make you want to eat more of them and it works. They are also processed so much that they tend to be softer and easier to chew, or you may not have to chew them at all. Texture affects eating speed. If you limit chewing and you eat faster, it is going to lead to you eating more. But when you eat slowly and chew your food, this leads to better appetite control. Think about the difference between eating potato chips or a baked potato. UPFs also tend to be high in unhealthy fats and simple carbs. Both of these things create a highly palatable food that is, again, not going to fill you up and lead you to overeating. So much of what is available to us at the grocery store is processed food. I mean, anything that you find in the aisles is probably processed in some way. But again, just because something is processed doesn't automatically make it bad. But think about this for a minute and think about the number of ultra processed foods that are marketed to you every day, including diet foods. Diet foods are packaged, they come ready to go. And most often this probably means they're an ultra processed food. If you've ever purchased a diet program and failed, just let that sink in for a minute because you are far from at fault. You are trying to make a change and you're committing to something that will work. The problem is that it can't work forever and will most likely lead to weight regain eventually. Your actual easy button to reduce risk of disease, limit overeating, and actually improve your health, including weight loss that lasts? Consume less ultra processed foods. Simply focusing on consuming less of these foods can significantly improve diet quality and make meals feel more satisfying, leading to better health, weight control, and reduction of chronic disease. You don't need a diet overhaul. Just focus on consuming less of these things and you're automatically gonna consume more of the better stuff. If you grew up in the 80s and 90s like me, then you have lived through this unbelievable spike in UPFs being right at our fingertips. If you look back 50 or more years, the American diet was vastly different than what it looks like today. That's a fact that simply cannot be denied, and it also can't be denied that our health has suffered tremendously at the same time. A diet primarily of whole and minimally processed foods is simply better. It reduces hunger, leads to actual satisfaction in meals, forces you to chew more and take time to eat, leads you to feeling fuller so that you don't overeat, and it gives your body so much more in the way of nutrients so that your body can function at its best and not be fighting off toxins from a diet full of UPFs. Remember when mom used to say, you are what you eat? Well, of course we're not gonna become a potato chip, but our bodies sure as shit won't work well if we're feeding it a diet of highly processed foods low in nutrients. So here are a few suggestions to start paying closer attention to your UPF consumption. Number one, look at the nutrition label. Try to limit those that have added sugars or trans fats. Number two, read the ingredients listed underneath the food label. Try to avoid or limit foods that contain ingredients such as high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, food dyes, MSG or monosodium glutamate, sodium nitrates or nitrites, and sulfites such as sulfur dioxide. 
Honestly, a long ingredient list is almost always going to be a red flag, but there are exceptions. Read the ingredients, and if most of them are ingredients that you don't know or you don't use at home, chances are the red flag is probably legit. Number three, simply start making it a priority to consume more minimally or unprocessed foods. And I made a free download to help you with this. After last week's episode, many of you asked what my favorite sources of fiber are. So I decided to put together a brand new food list so that you could pick nutrient-dense and fiber-packed foods. I have linked the free download in the show notes for you. Use this list to shop and just pick a few new items from it every time you go. Adding in more of these foods will automatically lead to you limiting your intake of UPFs. It might feel hard at first, and that's okay. Before you know it, you will start feeling better and have more energy. And if you're trying to lose weight, this is a strategy that works flawlessly. I certainly hope that today helped you to open your eyes a little bit and encourage you to just continue to want to do better because we all always can do better. I'd also like to mention that my house is not absent of processed or ultra processed foods, by the way, but you better believe that whole or minimally processed foods take precedence. We fill up on those without question first, and then there's room for treats that don't necessarily provide nutrition, but they do make my mouth happy. Keep striving to just do a little bit better. It's a never ending journey that always has bumps and requires pivots and U-turns and so on, but your health matters and it is worth putting in continual effort each day. Go make it happen. 